Hey everyone, I'm a frog. Halo is one of the most famous game series of all time. Even though now its popularity has fallen off some, the original trilogy is still viewed as three of the best games of all time and there's no shortage of nostalgia for them. With that said, there's always been criticism thrown at these games. With Halo CE, a lot of people felt like the second half of the game was significantly weaker than the first. With Halo 2, a lot of fans were upset about playing as the Arbiter for half the campaign, including the last level and the game ending on a cliffhanger. With Halo 3, it was the removal of hitscan weapons and the campaign having not so great right. Whether valid or not, the criticisms levied at the first three games didn't stop them from being overall beloved. As the years went by, though, with each new title, the negativity around each game grew, really starting with Reach and culminating with Halo 5. Like a lot of Halo fans, I didn't like Halo 5. So much so that I beat the campaign and played a bit of multiplayer for a week or two after launch and haven't really even touched it since. But I had some downtime and I decided to do something I hadn't done in almost eight years, which is play Halo 5's campaign in its entirety and see if, frankly, it was as bad as I remembered. And I am gonna be focusing on the campaign in this video because I'm not really a multiplayer person. And most of the hate Halo 5 gets is because of its campaign. So without further ado, let's go ahead and hop in. Get it? Cause like hop, cause I'm a frog and frogs hop. So it's like, let's hop in cause I'm, I'm a frog. The game does, I think, start off strong at least. You play a Spartan Locke who's in charge of Spartan Fireteam Osiris. The opening action cutscene with Fireteam Osiris is cool and the level Osiris is fun. You find both Prometheans and Covenant in this level, but mostly Prometheans. The Covenant are still the more fun faction to fight against for sure, but the Prometheans in this game are better than they were in Halo 4 in my opinion. Knights are switched from being the primary enemy like elites to being more of a mini boss like hunters. In their place, there are Promethean soldiers, which are kind of boring, but they at least feel different than the Covenant, whereas Knights in Halo 4 were essentially just elites that teleport. Besides just the Prometheans themselves, there's also their weapons. In Halo 4, the suppressor felt too much like the storm rifle, the scatter shot was just a shotgun, the binary rifle was just a sniper. In Halo 5, these weapons also feel more unique. The suppressor and bolt shot now have this cool tracking mechanic when you shoot. The binary rifle fires a beam for a second rather than just a single projectile. The scatter shot is still just a shotgun, but whatever. As you run through the level of Cyrus, you're picking up these weapons, fighting the new Prometheans, getting used to the game. The changes to the art style got a lot of criticism, and in Halo 4, I think it definitely is for the worse. And here, some of the designs still look goofy for sure, but overall, Halo 5 looks fantastic, and the snowy environment you fight in on Osiris, as well as the stunning backdrop, are a great introduction to the game from a visual perspective. This level also introduces Spartan abilities. This is stuff like the Spartan Charge or the Thruster Pack. Combined with Universal Sprint, this makes Halo 5 a much faster game than old school Halo. I remember not liking this at the time, because around 2015, the market was oversaturated with Titanfall type gameplay, and it felt like trend hopping, but now I actually think this all works well. It's fun. It's different than classic Halo for sure, but I don't think they should just release the exact same game every time. Story-wise, your objective in Osiris is to rescue Dr. Halsey, who is being held hostage by Covenant leader Jewel Imdama. If you didn't play Spartan Ops in Halo 4, you would have no idea who Jewel Imdama is, why he has Halsey, or why Halsey has only one arm. As someone who never finished Spartan Ops, I am describing myself. In a similar vein, in the next mission, Blue Team, you play as Master Chief and fight with, well, Blue Team. You may be asking yourself, who is Blue Team? One of the biggest issues with Halo 5's story is a concept that you're probably familiar with even if you've never heard the actual term, it's Halo 5's dependence on transmedia storytelling. This is just the idea of telling a story through multiple mediums, so video games, books, podcasts, etc. Halo has always had books and supplemental material for people who are really into the universe. But that's the thing, it was always supplemental. You didn't have to go outside the games to understand what's happening in the games. Reading The Fall of Reach would tell you more about Master Chief and Cortana, but their characters were established and you learn everything you needed to know about them through Halo CE itself. So I actually think it's fine that the new characters in Halo 5 have their own novels and comic books and live action series elsewhere, but that shouldn't be the entirety of their characterizations. I haven't read or seen any of that extra material, so just judging off the game, Fireteam Osiris is a bunch of non-characters because the game itself doesn't build them up at all. Blue Team I did know about, but as far as Halo 5 goes, same thing, they're non-characters. Buck isn't a new character, but without reading his book, you have no idea why he's a Spartan. Like in Halo 4, the mantle is mentioned a couple times, but without reading this book from 2011, you don't know what that is. You can have exposition and cutscenes. Halo 2's cutscenes explain so much about the Covenant, the Great Journey, and the Arbiter, and it's to that game's benefit. Imagine if instead of getting the Heretic cutscene and most of the Arbiter cutscene, your introduction to the Arbiter was this Phantom Ride where you suddenly see an Elite in weird armor and find out you're playing as him and you don't know anything about him. It wouldn't work. And if there is someone who doesn't care about the backstory, that's what the skip button is for. Uh, boring. Skip. 
Wait, what the fuck? There's nothing wrong with having media outside of the games, but they should expand on the game's lore, not take the place of it. So while Blue Team as a level, I think is great in terms of gameplay, I had a lot of fun playing through it, which to me is what's most important in a Halo game. At the same time, I am taken out of it a bit when I don't really know who the rest of the squad I'm fighting with is. This is doubly true with Fireteam Osiris. And I'll also just mention Halo 5 added this Republic Commando Gears of War squad mechanic of going down and getting revived and reviving your squad mates, which I think is whatever. I don't hate it or love it. But if you're going to build the gameplay around your squad, then I think it's worth building up who your squad actually is in the game. Worth noting in this level, you're introduced to hunters and it's set up like a horror movie where they jump scare you and then chase you through the underground levels. On one hand, I think this is kind of goofy because at this point, Master Chief has killed hundreds, if not thousands of hunters. But on the other hand, I know that Young Frog would have been absolutely terrified by this. Story-wise, Master Chief falls down after getting jump scared by the hunters and sees a vision of Cortana. He wakes up and is like, I saw Cortana and Blue Team is like, that's crazy. Let's go blow up the station. Afterward, they escape and instead of returning to the Infinity as ordered, they go to the planet Meridian to find Cortana. Back at the Infinity, Halsey thinks if Cortana is alive, she'd be a threat. So Lasky orders Fireteam Osiris to track down Blue Team and bring them back and they head off to Meridian to find them. I'll take a second to briefly mention one of the big issues a lot of Halo fans had with Halo 5 that actually wasn't part of the actual game. The marketing. Specifically the Hunt the Truth trailers where there's a suggestion that Master Chief has turned evil and Locke is supposed to kill him and one trailer where Locke's about to shoot Chief and another where Chief is about to shoot Locke. The trailers got a lot of people intrigued. Now, I'm not a marketing expert. However, one rule I would imagine you should probably stick to is making sure your marketing actually relates to what you're selling. If the Barbie movie trailer cut in footage of a giant dragon burning down Barbie land, since that doesn't actually happen in the movie, you give audiences the wrong idea of what to expect. With the Hunt the Truth campaign, these trailers had nothing to do with the actual plot of Halo 5. Spartan Locke is hunting Master Chief, but the entire concept of them trying to kill each other and is the Master Chief actually a bad guy? There's none of that in the game. Nonetheless, your first mission, hunting the Master Chief, is glassed. It's your first vehicle level. You get to drive a Warthog and a tank. I'll go ahead and say now that I played on normal instead of my usual Legendary since I hadn't touched Halo 5 in a long time and I didn't know how long it would take me to beat it on Legendary. This level glassed, playing on normal, took me 12 minutes. And I looked up other people's Let's Plays on it to make sure that wasn't unusual and yeah, it seems to take people about 15 minutes or less to beat. What's weird is that this is followed up by three more levels that all take place on the same planet and each of them took me respectively 5 minutes, 15 minutes, and 14 minutes to beat. As I was beating them, I didn't even realize I was moving on to different missions. They're so short and everything just bleeds together. The 5 minute level Meridian Station is literally just walking around trying to get information about where Blue Team went. It should have just been a short cutscene. And it's weird that killing Jewel and Dama, the leader of the Covenant, was in a cutscene and deemed not worth playing yourself, while just walking around talking to people was made an entire level. Absolutely baffling. Meridian Station shouldn't be a level, and the other three levels on Meridian, so glassed, unconfirmed, and evacuation should just be one level. It's as if they broke them into multiple levels just to make the game seem longer than it really is. I'll also just mention that this is the point in the game where Osiris does run into Blue Team and Locke and Chief get into a fist fight that everyone hates, and yeah, it's uh, not great. Gameplay-wise in these levels, they are fun. Scorpion Tank is always a good time in Halo. They do add watchers during Unconfirmed, which I was ready to be angry about, but there's a lot less of them, and the annoying stuff they do in Halo 4 is toned down a lot. So they're still not awesome, but they're fine. You also get your first Warden Eternal fight. It's not something I'd want to do over and over again, but as a one-off thing, it's whatever. I'm sure he won't be popping back up throughout the course of the game. If you played Halo 5, you know I'm kidding, and actually the next level after Evacuation, called Reunion, you play as Blue Team, now on a Forerunner planet called Genesis, and midway through you get to fight Warden Eternal again. I don't want to completely beat a dead horse, but yeah, the Warden Eternal fights get old really fast. Later on in the level, you get to fly a Forerunner Phaeton. Now, flight levels are some of the best in Halo. In two betrayals, you fly through the wide open snowy canyon. In multiple Halo 2 levels, you get to fly through these crazy and unique open environments. In Halo 3, there's the outdoor Hornet section on the Covenant. The Phaeton section could have been really cool, the problem is you're stuck inside a cave just shooting turrets. There's no room to explore and fly around. You are literally on a linear path in an enclosed environment, completely counteracting what makes aerial sections fun. On a positive note, Genesis as an environment is really beautiful, and I love the Forerunner aesthetic, and the gunplay fighting the Covenant on the ground is great. It just feels like a missed opportunity to make the level really memorable. Back as Osiris, you go to Sanghelios, the elite homeworld where there's a civil war between the Covenant and the Swords of Sanghelios led by, spoiler alert, the Arbiter. One criticism of the game that I'm not on board with is that you barely get to play as Master Chief and are mostly Locke. But Halo 2 alternates with the Arbiter. In ODST, you don't even play as a Spartan. In Reach, you play as Noble Six. I don't really care who I play as. I don't think the issue is that you aren't playing as Master Chief. I think it's really just that Locke is an uninteresting character. Back to Swords of Sanghelios, I am going to do the same thing I did earlier, which is point out there are four levels 
all sorts of Sanghelios, Alliance, Enemy Lions, and Before the Storm that should just be one level. Alliance and Before the Storm are two more just walk around and talk to people levels, so same thing, just make those cutscenes. Please. On the bright side, Swords of Sanghelios and Enemy Lines are two of the best levels in the game. Honestly, that's partly just because you're fighting Covenant and Zero Prometheans, but still. In Enemy Lines, you get to fight what's called a Kraken, which is this game's version of the Halo 3 Scarab fight. I really like this fight. It was cool to go against this thing and have the freedom to deal with it in multiple ways, and since I hadn't played this game in years, I didn't know where exactly the core to blow it up was or where to go. It's a unique encounter, and could it have been better? I guess, but I enjoyed it. There's another level on Sanghelios, but this one, Battle of Sinaion, does warrant being its own level, both in terms of Link, that's environment being unique, and it being another solid level. Story-wise, this is where the New Covenant gets defeated, mostly, and Fire Team Osiris hops on a Guardian and heads to Genesis, which starts the next level, also called Genesis. In my Halo 4 video, I spent a couple minutes talking about every level, but this game is awkward because of how short everything is. In Genesis, you drive around a tank, fight Warden Eternal, and that's it. It was another level that only took me 13 minutes. It does end with Osiris catching up to Blue Team and Locke is like, Cortana's bad, and Master Chief is like, we know. Then Blue Team gets teleported away and thus begins the second to last mission, The Breaking. The Breaking, named after Pennsylvania rock band Breaking Benjamin, is probably the most infamous level in the game. Prior to replaying Halo 5, I was ready to hate this level and say it's the worst, but actually it is really good. I love the environment, the Promethean enemies were actually a lot of fun to take on here, it just has one fatal flaw, the boss fight. It's a Warden Eternal fight, one of many throughout the game. However, to raise the stakes, they decided to make you fight three at once. I was playing on normal, so it wasn't hard. I can't imagine what it's like on Legendary. But at this point in the game, the Warden Eternal fights are so boring and overdone, and then they throw three of them at you at once. No. At the end of the level during the cutscene, you finally meet Cortana, and in quite the contrast to Halo 4, she's wearing clothes. She tries to convince Blue Team to kill everyone with her, and they're like, no, and then she seals them in a prison like the Didact was in. Which brings us to the last mission, Guardians. It is one of the longer missions in the game, so no complaints there. However, it's really just three sections. There's opening combat, then a mana section, then a holdout section, then the game's over. You rescue Blue Team, and then the conflict with Cortana is resolved off screen between 5 and Infinite because everyone hated Halo 5's story. So much for your cliffhanger. Let me summarize my thoughts on Halo 5's campaign. So going into it, seeing there were 15 levels, even with me remembering that three of them were just walking around talking to people, I still expected a long campaign, but it was really short, and it wasn't just Frog is so amazing at Halo we blew through it, because like I said, judging from YouTube playthroughs, it seems it's that way for everyone. It's like ODST. ODST has amazing levels, they just aren't long enough. It's not quite the same, because I think ODST's levels were a lot better, but what is in Halo 5 I did have fun with. In some of Halo 5's levels, like I said, they feel like they should all be part of the same level, but were split up to inflate the level count. I've said Halo 5 was my least favorite Halo campaign, and that is still true. It is better than I remember it being, though. It's a good campaign that's soiled a bit by a few things. The story, the Warden Eternal fights, and the random wasted time filler missions where you just walk around talking to people. For me as a 15-year-old 8 years ago, that was enough to completely ruin the game for me. Now, I unfortunately have the most boring opinion on a piece of media you can have, which is that it's okay. I didn't hate it. I enjoyed spending an afternoon playing through it. I don't plan on playing it again anytime soon, but it was fine. I wish I could title this video something like, Halo 5 is the worst pile of trash I've ever played. Or, actually, Halo 5 is one of the best Halos. But I'm not going to exaggerate how I feel either way. It's just alright. So, to answer the question, was Halo 5's campaign as bad as I remember? No, but it's still my least favorite. That's my thoughts on Halo 5's campaign. If you like this video, then be sure to click the video on screen to see me talk about Halo 4's campaign. I'll catch you next time.